What's going on? It's Aristotle. I'm in an apartment with Pale. You know what it is. ATL Legends. Me and my boy Parlay, we in this thing, man. Listen here. Make sure y'all get everything. Link in my bio. You know what it is. Hey, Parlay. Meet me at the apartment. <laughs> Yo. You already know this your boy Parlay live from Digit House Studio. And we in the apartment with Parlay. Meet me in the apartments. Listen. Love my city, ATL. Ain't nothing like it. The only thing I love more than my city It's the west side of my city. Shout out to Bankhead, Long Lil Swall, Rest Easy, Shout Low, Rest Easy, We Fly, AKA Buddy. Listen, every time we do these shows, I like to salute everybody who watch these podcasts because y'all are the ones who tell me what I'm doing and the path that I'm taking and I'm on the right path. You know what I'm saying? Because everything I do, I do for the streets. I do for the, everybody who watch it. You know what I'm saying? If you watch it and you don't really live no street life, that's cool. Get, in, get informed on what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Because I just want to do things to help my people. And I come from poverty. I come from the hood. I come from the slums. And I always feel like nobody ever comes and gives back to the to the people directly from the slums. You see what I'm saying? I feel like everybody pull from our culture and come get our artists. They they uh, publicize what we do in the hood. And they make cases and people, rappers get locked up and all this. And But who's actually trying to help somebody? And we ain't talking about offering no help. I'm talking about really showing you what to do and how to excel at what you're doing until you become comfortable enough to say, you know what, I don't want to keep doing what I was doing no more. It ain't working for me. I see a better way right now. And nobody's showing y'all no better way. So I always try to bring people to help y'all see a future and see it's a way. You can be who you want to be. Be just like you want to be. You can still be a millionaire. You can still get you some money. It's just called learning information. You know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta, you gotta indulge into so much information that the only thing you want to do is learn. You know what I'm saying? My next guest is a person just like us. I come from the same, from the city, come from the same circumstance we come from. But one thing that separates him from a lot of people is that he wanted to learn. He wanted to understand what, what was going on. You know what I'm saying? So once he found out what was going on, he learned, turned himself into a millionaire. The special thing about him is that I really like. When he did it, he just didn't do it and tell people what he was doing. He actually showed people how to do it step for step with him. You know what I'm saying? And people people show y'all what, tell you what to do, but they won't show you. They'll just tell you, oh, yeah, you can go over there. Just, oh, you want to get a deal? Just get a studio and start rapping. It ain't that simple. You need somebody to show you now to do this. You got to do it like this. Them all the details, and he give you the details. You know what I'm saying? And one thing I know is that's some real nigga shit, and it ain't a lot of real niggas, especially in these times right now. You know what I'm saying? So I want to give a shout-out to my next guest, Aristotle. What's going on, dog? What's going on, dog? What's going on, dog? What's going on, dog? What's going on, I'm telling you, then. I appreciate the intro, bro. That shit was cold. I appreciate it. That ain't real. For sure. That ain't real. You got a dope-ass story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I always seen you. I always, you know what I'm saying? Come across the timeline, seen everything you're doing. And then I, I had a chance to sit down and actually hear you talk. You know what I'm saying? And hear you talk about, you know, your transgressions and things that you overcame, you know what I'm saying? And the first thing that came in my head wasn't what you accomplished doing it. The first thing that came in my head was, nigga, just like me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And that notion makes me say, like, yeah, that shit ain't. Because go ahead and do that shit. Because for a nigga like me, when I think about this shit, I'll be like, man, that shit too much shit for me to be trying to goddamn learn and figure this shit out, bro. You know what I'm saying? But now I start saying, when I seen you, I was like, shit ain't that hard, lady. Like, it's just about sitting down and actually taking your time out of your day to focus on doing some things that's going to get you ahead of time. And niggas who come from where we come from, a lot of times we don't want to understand that because our minds is so ton of vision on money, money, money. And the only way we know how to get money is the hustle. So if it ain't hustle, it's like, ah, yeah, I hear you. Okay, yeah, you selling shoes and clothes? Yeah, it might work for you, but, oh, nigga, I, this right here, I sell a brick, nigga, I can make me 80. You see what I'm saying? So you give a whole other different perspective for young niggas with paper because there's a lot of young niggas now playing with this paper. For sure. And they go fuck it off. Cars, clothes, strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? So if these niggas can take a little bit of that shit, follow the steps that you do, the things you say, they can change their life and we can start creating generational wealth. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's do this. Let's tell people um, where you're from, mm-hmm. um, where you're from, where you grew up at. I want to get into your story because I feel like um, it'll help people relate to you more. I feel like anytime a person hears your story, where you come from, stuff you went through, the way you seen stuff growing up, and I, 
I feel like it helps them to relate to you. So when you start talking, it's like, oh, I can follow them now. You know what I'm saying? Right. So let's start where you grew up from. So um, I'm from uh, South Side of Atlanta. My dad's side of the family is from Cleveland Avenue. Uh, my mom's side of the family is from Florence, South Carolina, but my uh, granddad got a job at Bell South, but now it's called AT&T, and he moved to Atlanta. So, you know, that's how my mom ended up seeing my dad. My dad from Atlanta. My dad from uh, Cleveland Ave, mm-hmm. like that area. So um, that's where I'm from. That's, you know, so I always kind of live with my mom, visiting my dad, and one time I ended up staying with my dad, and we stayed off uh, Conley Road in uh, Cleveland Ave. That's where we stayed. So I Ford Park? Yeah, so. Yep. I used to play for the Ford Park Viking when I was little. I used to um play for uh Rosa Fan, Southeast. Oh, yep. When I was little. <laughs> and uh old National Knights. I used to play for, for sure. them. Shout so, out to old that too. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm real South Side. Uh and you know, I'm a uh I got nine brothers and sisters. My dad had seven kids, my mom had four. Where you follow that? Say what? Where you fall in, in between your siblings? Um, with my mom, I was her second child. With my dad, I was his third child. Okay. Yeah. So you, you top, you top of them. Yeah, like kind of mid, mm-hmm. middle child, and all of them. So it was like, you know, I guess because of that dynamic, I end up like becoming a hustler. Because mm-hmm. I just, I, I always been hustling though. Like I always tell people, there's parables between. Like, you know how some people be like, what was it about you back in the day that makes you who you are now? And then when I sit back and think about it, I'm like, shit, I've been hustling since. You put me in any environment. Like, I don't care what it was. Like, if I lived in the hood, I was going to come out leading the pack. You put me in the suburbs, leader, school, anything. I always just, but I always stood on my own too, made my own money type shit. So when I was nine years old, my first job was uh, knocking on people's door, taking out the trash. And then uh what I was you getting paid? I was getting paid one dollar per door. That was the first that was the first job everybody did. Yeah. Need your trash took out? Yeah. That was the first thing <laughs> I did when I was nine years old. But you do you do all the bills in the project, but you fuck around, you a home. So I used to make like uh maybe like ten to fifteen dollars a day That's doing great. that. And I was only like nine years old. And then I started to walk this boy home too, to make sure make sure he was safe. Cause you know, we was living in that area. So it was a lady who wanted to make sure her son was safe. I was only nine years old. He was like pre-K. Walk him home, $10 a week. And then I was just hustling like that. At nine, I always had like two streams of income since I was a kid. This nigga was a bodyguard at nine. <laughs> this nigga was a bodyguard at nine. Get paid 10 That's some shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. She wanted somebody who was trustworthy too. Mm-hmm. And you know what so I'm saying? I always kind of been like that. So yeah, like. I guess I come from the same area everybody else comes from. I tell people Atlanta's like a horseshoe. Most of us stay on, like, the outskirts, really. But those are the people who, you know, we you know, we be networking with and connecting with, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Like, you know what's crazy, man? I used to listen to Franchise Boy when I was in uh, – actually, during that time when I was hustling. We would lean with it, rock with it. Nah, I was right. like nine years old. This shit was back in like. God damn, this 04, nigga shit. 05. God damn, y'all don't know time. Man. God damn it. Hold on. Shit. You heard hey. the nigga say it. That nigga said, I listened to your song. I was nine years old. I was nine, bro. <laughs> real shit. I remember that shit, though. Nah, for real, for real. We were listening to the franchise, boy, for sure. We nah, that's in the right. Southern Trace Apartments. I'll kindly roll. I remember. Nah, they were the hood. Then I used to swing around there too. Mm-hmm. I, used to be in that, I used to be in the area a lot. I used to fuck around South Side. I used to go to South Side 17 before they closed it down. Sure. So I met a whole bunch of people in that in the area right there. Mm-hmm. So you moving? What kind of things you was into as a kid? Other than other than oh, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna just hustle just in me. Nobody ever asked that question. I was in, I was into a lot of shit when I was a kid. When I sit back and think about it, I was really into video games. I actually like skateboarding a lot. I love Tony Hawk. But I love football too. I was kind of well rounded. I like everything. Like, what the fuck made you like skateboarding? That's a great question because I was around no white people. It was uh oh, my dad brought me a PS one for Christmas when I was like, probably like six, seven years you old. You got that Tony Hawk. Yep. And then it came with the Tony Hawk. Put that shit in. I was he like, was, man, this shit hard. I know exactly the game you talking about. Yeah. 
I know exactly what game you're talking about. And that shit made you like skateboarding. You want to got your skateboard. It was a rap from there. I love skateboarding after that. So you still, you, did you start riding them? I did. My dad bought me a skateboard. You still taught yourself? Yeah. You taught yourself how to ollie and everything? I, I did it, yeah. How the fuck you just taught yourself how to ollie? Honestly, like, it was dudes in the neighborhood, like, who just knew how to, they were just fucking with it. And then we just figured it out. Niggas. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Niggas will figure some shit out, for sure, for sure. I, I was into uh, drawing. I was an artist, so I pay attention to detail. So when I started trading, it was real easy for me to, like, identify patterns and all of that because I was very into that. I was always in uh, advanced art uh, throughout my whole life. So from uh, kindergarten to all the way up to 12th grade, I was always in the top art class. Mm. And I was always... Uh, I was always in the top math and reading classes. Now that's and I was still living in the hood, and I was still in all you know making honor roll, doing stuff like that. So I was also not an idiot either. You know, what I'm saying I was actually smart. Um, despite any environment, though, like I was always going to survive. I think that comes from the fact that my older sister was very smart. Um, she made all A's. So my mom would always kind of like compare me to her, even though I was a boy, I really didn't care. But it made me want to like step it up, you know. And then uh, I don't know, like as a kid, I was kind of I kind of how I am now. Like I'm a popular loner. That's how I like to call myself. Like I really always alone with my wife or just me. But like I could be somewhere, everybody know who I am. So you don't, you don't really like people? Nah. We got a lot of similarity, dog. I use a skateboard, too. I fuck with the skateboard, too. Mm -hmm. shit. I like skateboard. I like drawing and shit, too. Mm -hmm. All that shit. And like you say, patterns and shit. And I, I do that shit with um, engineering. Mm -hmm. I just know how to weed wave patterns. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's easy. And, and I do shit. People like, Pilot, how you know that? I just like, you see it, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the waves and shit. Look at the beat waves. Look at the claps. Look at the snaps. Look at the, you know what I'm saying? Right. Nah, for real. And I don't like people either. I ain't, I, cause yeah. I, I ain't gonna say I'm a popular loner, but I don't like niggas. I like who I, I like. I, I'll say that, yeah. Like, I just don't, I don't, I'm not trying to be, be friends with everybody. Nobody. Me, period. With everybody. I, yeah. I'm talking about, like, it gotta be some goddamn value based shit. Always. You get what I'm saying? Cause it's like, I don't know. I just feel like people like to force their uh, ideologies on, on you if you be around them too long. For sure. And I don't really like to, uh, I feel like if I got here and it was successful, I got to listen to me. You know what I mean? And I don't like to be influenced. And it's almost like I tell people, everybody can get influenced, like the butterfly effect. It's like, okay, I told, uh, I was telling my wife, I said, Hey, let's just say I was around rappers, all rappers, right? And I allowed my wife to be in that environment. They girls got BBLs, lip injections, whatever, whatever. And my wife goes to the party with them. She go to the, uh, the kids, birthdays, all that. She's hanging around these people. Eventually. She starts to think like them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, eventually. It's so happen. it's like I don't like to hang around niggas I don't want to think like. You get what I'm saying? Like, if I don't like your mindset, I can't be around you. And it's no offense. It's just a nigga don't want to be influenced by it. You know what I mean? Because, like, let's just say me and you partners, right, and we got to be doing some business. And you always the type to be like, bro, I don't feel like doing this shit. i do it tomorrow. Or I'm like, bro, I'm really trying to go do something. You're like, yeah, bro, I'm tired. I had a long day. If you one of them type niggas, you're going to rub off on me. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I don't want nobody laziness either to rub off on me. So I notice I get a lot of work done just being by myself. You surround yourself around the people you want to be around. Exactly. People say that all the time. But I, I always say, it's kind of like kind of like you said, but I, I always say, like, everybody you fuck with has to have a purpose. Yeah. And, and the people who don't understand that have a hard time in life. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it's not always, and people will take that and be like, Ah, that's a bad thing. If I'm fucking with you, I got to have a reason I'm fucking with you. And if I'm fucking with you, I got to win off you. You just can't win off me. It's called quid pro quo, Latin for you do for me, I do for you. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you study other cultures, they collaborate. They do a lot of uh-uh, even with uh-uh. And you know, I be telling I be telling black people the same thing. I'm like, man, we gotta do business with them because everybody else doing business with each other. And we always talk about, let's build our own, let's do our own, but the rest of the world collab, collab, collab. So like, even when y'all talking about that Dion shit, I was on some like, man, to be honest, the world ain't changing. We never going back to, you know what I'm saying, segregation. So why not got them get some money if it's right in our face? You feel me? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Especially if you're, especially, everybody has their own purpose. My purpose is not everybody's purpose. Facts. So if I choose to do this, you don't have to agree with that because you don't have to walk this path. You see what I'm saying? And 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 I feel like that's that's why I don't like social media. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like when you, I mean, uh, Cole, what was that? Where the hell was that? They said check your social media, see how long you be on Instagram, right? I, I be doing it. I be doing it all the time now, bro. I be like hour thirty eight minutes. I ain't I ain't been for I ain't been higher than two hours and five minutes. Right. You see what I'm saying? I just don't like looking at a whole bunch of niggas and the shit they don't. I just don't. You know what I'm saying? I like to look at shit that inspires me, like. I I learned this. You got to use Instagram for a money reason or it ain't going to make sense. Facts. That's it. So, like, I do it because it's actually a job. I'm studying how you market. You get what I'm saying? I'm following you for a reason to see. I, I only follow people with motion. Meaning, right. like, if I want to know, and I also want to follow people that also work hard every day, but also stand for something. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, it's like. I changed, I had to change my mindset to that. How are you marketing? Uh, how did you make money off that play? How did the, I'm always thinking of everything from a money standpoint. Like, let's just say I go to Starbucks, right? I get a coffee. I'm like, okay. I, my mind always thinking about the money. I'm like, okay. They probably, it probably cost them like 12 cents to make this. They charge me $5. And then how can they get me spending more? You get what I'm saying? Should it should it been some good looking woman behind that counter? Should they had some food? I would have bought more. I'm always thinking of like, how can I make money and keep selling to that person more? So every everywhere I go and everything I do, even the people I follow on Instagram, I'm like, okay, how are they captivating their audience? Are these real? Okay, how are the comments? You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm looking for all that. I change you gotta change your mindset to that. And then now you start to be, start to see geniuses. And everyone, you get what I'm saying? And you take, and I'm taking things from everyone, like, you know, no matter who they are, I'll find their genius and I'll, you get what I'm saying, like, study it. No, that's some, that's some, that's some genius shit. The people who can do that are the people who find themselves taking further steps. Because I, I say, I, I relate to this. Mm-hmm. Niggas in the shoes, I tell my little homie this all the time. Bruh, don't get spanked. When you know what's wrong. If you seen somebody else get locked up because goddamn it, they was fucking smoking around, stop smoking around. If you seen niggas get locked up because they showing they fucking guns on Instagram and shit, how the fuck you gonna do it? You see what I'm saying? We have to learn from other niggas' mistakes. The people who learn from other people's mistakes have tend to have better success rate, dog. That's facts. I feel like when even when I was living you know, when I lived with my dad uh, off Cleveland and then off uh, Conley, it was that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, crackhead, seeing everything, you know. You know it was there, right? Everything you could think of. Crackheads, prostitution, kids, banging, all that, right? But I always looked at it as don't do it. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people got a misconception about that of hoods. There are some kids who are good and look at them like, we ain't doing this. Facts. Everybody think like, everybody like, for instance, somebody might look at a place like O Block and think all them kids there is on that. To be honest, it's going to be some good ones who like, nah, I ain't no, now I'm trying to keep my head down. I was that kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Who could be around the bad kids and everything, but they know when it was time to go do whatever they were supposed to do, he is out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he... He he playing, he ain't, you know, he ain't doing that. I call them, uh, I call people like that free thinkers. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I identify as one, too, because I always been around street shit and street niggas always. But if I said, need it going on, I'll be back. Now you won't go? Hey, you going out? I remember, I'll never forget when I first started rapping. When I first started rapping, when I came from school, I was selling two for fives. First nigga in Atlanta sell two, two nicks for five dollars, period. First two for five trap, born home. You know what I'm saying? I had niggas pulling up, spending five thousand dollars and buying sacks. I don't want to. I don't want a pound. I want all sacks. These facts. You see what I'm saying? But I would leave and go to the studio, and my niggas would be like, "Nigga, you stupid as fuck, nigga. I'm, I'm finna make eight thousand while your ass going to the studio." But I was just like, "It's just, I, it's some, it's some. I, I need to go do this right now." You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> I had niggas who I was trying to rap to. Man, come on to do this rap shit. They couldn't understand. My big homie. Another story. Never forget this. It's one of the things that kind of elevated me mentally. I went to birthday bash, my first birthday bash. It was in 2003. 2003, my first birthday bash. And we, we watched, and I was like, nigga, I'm going to be up there next year. And nigga laughed at me. <laughs> like, <laughs> turned on me. I never forget that shit. Then the next year, nigga, 2004, I was at birthday bash. I guess it was right on side of me, my homie. You know what I'm saying? You have to you have to be able to understand what you want and what your path is. You see what I'm saying? They do that. I tell a lot of these niggas who be around these niggas who sliding. It's okay to be around the gangster niggas and be with this shit, but if you know they ain't in your DNA, it's okay to be Trey. From Boys in the Hood. Remember he told got them dope, hey man, let me out of the car. It's, it's okay to get out the car. Nigga ain't, <laughs> if you ain't with that shit, don't do it, bro. But then nigga gotta be free thinkers. Like you say, when you get around so many people, if they doing that shit, guess what? Shit, eventually you're going to start doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? And then it's hard to identify that because, like you say now, this for my young niggas again, just because a nigga shoot a pistol, just because a nigga shot at a nigga, just because a nigga talk that shit around you don't really mean that he's about that. You know what I'm saying? And don't wait to get put in a situation with him to find out that because he's going to tell on you. Then you're going to be down there doing life, and then you're going to be mad and rural, it's about doing something to this man when actually you put yourself in that situation because y'all don't learn how to identify who's with this shit and who not. You know what I'm saying? Nah, for sure, for sure. Nah, for sure. When did you actually start saying that? When, at what point did you say, I want to do this in life? This is what I want to be. Did you ever have a goal to be like, this is what I want to be. I want to do this. I, you know, something I want to be a doctor. I want to be a kingpin. Right. I want to go to the league. You know what I'm saying? Did you have a, a, a goal point as a kid that you wanted to do? Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep it 1,000 with you. Like, it's the honest truth. Like, I always kind of saw myself as a millionaire. Like, I knew I was going to be a young millionaire my whole life, like around – Honestly, since I can remember thinking, you know what I'm saying? It was just, it just felt like my calling. Uh, I was, I had no reason as far as my environment to think that I had no distinct advantage. My mom didn't have a job. My dad got seven kids, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was, I, I, I told myself, I don't know what I want to do, but my goal is to be an inventor. My goal is to make money being an entrepreneur, really. Like, but like, but I always wanted to invent something, like world changer. I still haven't. I got M's and still haven't accomplished my real goal. My real goal is to uh, invent something. Like, that's just been my dream. Like, sell a product that's mine that, like, I thought of and that's world changing. And everybody just wants, like a, like a PlayStation or Xbox. Like, that's just something I want to do. Um, and that's why I said I got to get millions so I can do that, so I can afford to do it, but I wanted to own it. You know, what made, I guess, the switch to wanting me to be a stock uh, person was I just had a passion for it. I was uh, in the Army. I hated being in, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what made you go to the Army? Well, my stepfather joined the Army uh, my junior year of high school. I was going to Creekside High School. Uh, Fairman, Georgia. Um, he got he got stationed in Kansas, so uh, Fort Riley, Kansas. So I have lived in Atlanta from zero to 
17 years old, go to Kansas for one year. I'm thinking the world is just weird. You get what I'm saying? Like, how the hell I'm in Kansas right now? And why did he quit his job to join the military? And he's, you know, over the age. I think he was 32 when he joined the Army. So I'm like, I'm just weirded out, you know, as a kid. My parents just up and just, they both worked at AT AT&T, those big buildings, downtown Mm -hmm. AT&T. Both was making about, uh, you know, probably 70K a piece. So we we was in a, we was an upper middle class family. They was doing pretty good, and my mom had three kids by the age of 21. She had my sister at 17, me at 19, and my younger sister at 21. So for my mom to come from that, from like triple teenage pregnancy, damn near to 70k job, AT and T, I was proud and inspired by that. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So my mom was always kind of like a, a hero to me just because I knew we was living in apartments, we was living in the hood, and now we got now, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like when I was in the Army, I really just, oh, but like why I joined the Army? Yeah, because uh, I could, I had no choice. <laughs> why you say you had no choice? <laughs> I know it's going to sound funny, but. My mom said, I'm going to this shit. We're keeping it real, right? My mom was like, shit, you can't goddamn, you got to leave when you're 18 years old. You know what I'm saying? And plus, my mom didn't have a job at this time. She was, you know, she was a housewife to my uh, stepfather, you know, um, while he was in the military, you know, holding it down, taking care of the finances, doing whatnot. So she was like, you got to leave, but you can't afford college. And we live on a military base, so she pretty much saying, hint, hint, you probably got to join the Army because you can't work somewhere and just shack up here. And you can't afford college because we have nothing for you. So basically, this is your only option. It's the only thing I got. You get what I'm saying? So I couldn't fuck it up. I had already had that mindset. Like, you know how, like, I think that's what it was. I had a back against the wall type mindset. Like, damn. But see, I knew I was alone and I weren't gonna be have nothing since 14. I knew I had to leave the house at 18 since 14. My mom told me that when I was a freshman. When you 18, you gotta get out of here. So I'm already thinking this shit as a teenager, thinking of what I'm gonna do when I'm 18. I'm pl- I'm plotting at 14. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? On what I'm gonna do. That's why I knew where I was going to go because that's all I used to research, how I'm going to take care of myself, how I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, because I got to get out here alone. And that's really what I spent my time, my teenage years doing, especially. Get yourself uh, prepared for that shit. For sure. For sure. Then you get in the Army. Now, Yeah. how the fuck you stumble on saying I'm going to focus on the stocks during this process? I started dabbling and learning about the stock market when I was 19 years old, I joined the Army at 18. As soon as I got in, I got introduced to it. I had a, a friend, he was a white guy. His name was uh, Roberts. First name was Justin. Cool white guy. White guys love me in the Army. They like when you be yourself. A lot of black guys don't realize that. They be trying to be like them. And then they, and then they end up liking guys like us, and they don't know why. But anyways, buddy got down introduced us to the uh, stock market. He was like, um, you should come to this to this Zoom meeting. I send you the link. And then uh, these dudes start giving us game on candlesticks. And I didn't understand the lick of what the fuck was going on, right? But the fact that I was there in that room was exciting to me. You know what I'm saying? Believe it or not, I went to a school in uh, Atlanta. It was called Heritage Academy. It's an elementary school. Um, they were they was teaching us stocks in fifth grade, mm. real shit. But I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. But I knew there was a stock market, and that's all I needed to know that there's a there's something out there like this. So in fifth grade, that was the first time I heard the stock market. Got introduced to it. Then eighteen, with you. and then when I turned fresh, 18, when you got learned, yeah. When I turned eighteen, I was like, okay, this the stock market. So then I start, I'm researching it. Just in and out since I was 18. Turned 19, you know what I'm saying? Keep researching. I turned 20, I was like, fuck it, I'm about to get in this. 20 years old. 
because I'm Googling like how to make money, how to make money. It just keep talking about the same thing I've been Googling. Then I had this uh this sergeant AIT. I remember Bitcoin was seven thousand. He was like, get in. We was talking about crypto. I was always in those conversations. I'm in the army. I'm talking to white guys about crypto. I remember all the crypto. They was. T- I remember Bitcoin was seven thousand. They was telling me to get in. He was like, this is the future. I wanted to get in it so bad, but I didn't know how to. Like nobody told me. All I I had the money. I was just like, just show me how to put my money in and buy, and I handle the rest. So then I fuck around and figure it out. You feel me? Like, I figure this shit out. Hit the blunt, fire the blunt, fire, hit your oh, joint. Yeah. Hit your joint. This got this shit got damn hard. This, this this shit getting for real now. Hit your joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit your joint. Yeah, hit your joint, dog. Hit your hit your joint. Dog. I'm gonna hit them off. I, oh yeah. I, yeah, this is yeah, this is this 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 when the shit started getting real. Yeah, I fuck around and figure this shit out, bro. You feel me? Like this was a year like twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. Uh I start. I start Googling it, then I start reading books, then I start trying to t- tell my family about it. Like, it's like a process. Then I write a book because everybody asking me about it. Cause you know I start posting screenshots. You know what I'm saying? I'm posting my games. People are like, how the hell are you doing that? And then out of nowhere, <coughs> I'm using my organic social media following. I only had about 1,700 followers, but I was real popular because I was a bar- I was a barber in the military. So I had two streams of income. I was getting money from the barber, and I was getting money from the uh, my military income. Dude, tax them nigga no haircut too one. Yeah, like I, I was, <laughs> well, it was like fifteen. <laughs> it, was, it was fifteen ahead. So you cut everybody, huh? Everybody. Yeah, I, I cut anybody like white, black, Indian, all that shit. So I was making about about three k a month for cutting hair, and the army was only paying me two thousand a month. So I was making about 60 grand since I was 18, 19, you feel me? So I was like saving my money. I was like, fuck it, I'm putting it in the stock market. So I made about 10,000 cutting hair while well, I saved it. You know, I would spend it on dumb shit at first. And I was like, fuck it, I'm about to save money from here on out. So I was, a fresh, I was fresh as hell. I used to fuck up all my money. And then one day I was just like, fuck it, I ain't gonna fuck up no more money. I'm about to save it. Ran up 10,000. It took about... Um, about six months for me to save 10. So I tell everybody how I did that. Like, I came up with a plan. I was only 20 years old. I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put $100 into my um account every Monday. So I downloaded this app called Acorns. And I said, fuck it. I'm going to automatically deposit $100 every Monday. I said, fuck it. I'm going to live below my means. I got to say that too. I cut off Jordans. I cut off playing video games. I cut off eating out. I cut off any expense. And I just told myself one day, I'm all money in into my dreams. All expenses are cut off. I'm living extremely below my means, cheap as I can. No dates. No females. Like, I'm even like, I ain't fucking with bitches. I cut my, everybody off. You know what I'm saying? And so I said, fuck it. There's 52 weeks in the year. If I save 100 every two weeks, there's no reason I shouldn't have 5,200. My, my fault, if I save 100 every week, there's no reason I shouldn't have 5,200 at the end of the year. Then I said, hmm, I get taxes. So I'm just going to save that whole tax, right? So then the app gave me an idea of how to get rich. It told me if I, at the rate I'm going, depositing 100 every week and leaving in this account, I'll be a millionaire by 65. So I looked at that shit, and I was like, what if I put in 200? Will I get there by 30 something? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, let me, let me keep. I'm trying to beat this time. So what I learned, this is the real secret of getting rich. You got to figure out how long it's going to take it and work every day to beat that time. And then soon you're going to start strategizing on how to fuck. So I'm strategizing on how to fuck. I can put in more than 100 every week so I can get closer to my dream because it's telling me I'll retire at 65, but I'm trying to beat that retirement time. So that's what got me into investing is saving, trying to learn how to save up for retirement. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, fuck it, I got to beat that time, beat that time. And then soon, I done fucked around and figured it out in three years. I done got rich three years later. How much you ran up in three years? Huh? How much you ran up in three years? A meal cash, though, while I was in the Army. So Mm. I didn't get out the Army till March 20th, 2020. I was a millionaire 
million dollars cash by January 2020 before the pandemic even hit. And that's what fucked. This is what killed me though. I'm making so I made my first six figures in 2018, made half a million in 2019, and then it's the beginning of 2020 is when I had my first M cash. But it wouldn't have happened that fast, but I doubled my money three months in a row. So like that was the craziest thing about my wealth too. I feel like everybody who gets rich has it's like a slow process and then next thing you know it just pew, 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 it just explodes out of nowhere. I think all of us start like that. Like it's very slow and painful. And then next thing you know, it just it's just a it's just a uphill from there. It's the blessing of the dedication. Yeah. That's what it is. It's the blessing of the dedication. I don't give a damn what you do. It's that same process, and you just explaining it in the money wealth time. But it's like if you want to be a basketball player, to, to get that jumper, well, you have to shoot so many motherfucking jumper. Well, you know what I mean? Shot Steph yeah. Curry, shoot motherf- the motherfucker, sure. bro. He's shooting the but motherfucker. See, I'm, I'm watching that stock market every day. I did not miss a day without watching the stock market in uh, six years. I watched the stock market every day. So I down there became one with it. Regardless of if I lose money, I still know what the fuck you doing. So one day I'm going to win. And one thing I learned, the stock market taught me a lot about life. But one, you got to lose to win in everything. I took a loss in everything first before I ever won. Everything I ever did. Whether it's stocks, whether it's this, whether it's that. I, I, you got to become numb to the pain <coughs> of losing. You got to be ready to lose. <coughs> And be ready to get the fuck up and fight again. And that's me. You know what I'm saying? That's my that's my trait that separates me from most is I'm willing to lose and I'm willing to go and battle against anything in life. You know what I mean? I don't fuck what it is, whether it's real estate, stocks. I feel like I can go box. I feel like I can go do anything. You gotta try to fail. I tell my kids that who I coach. I say, but try to fail. Try, try, try to fuck up. You gonna lose. You know what I'm saying? But when you fuck up, it's gonna teach you how not to, how not to fuck up no more. So sure. you can't know how to do if you don't fuck up. It's impossible. You know what I'm saying? It's, I don't give a. As soon as you start learning how to cook, you gonna but fuck see, some shit up. You know up. what was also about me? I stopped caring what other people think. Like you know how like, see, I stopped buying Jordans. I stopped buying clothes. I stopped going out. That helped me save, cause now I'm not worried about being as fresh as you. I'm not worried about being the, the biggest man. I'm at 20 years old. I said, fuck it. Cause I, and you know, what's crazy. I've been in, you know, I, I joined the army at 18. So I've been an adult for two years now. So I'm stressed out in these two years. Like, damn, it's been two years as an adult and I ain't did shit yet. So I'm telling myself at 20, like, fuck it. I'm about to save my money. I save that 10,000. I learned the stock market. I put it into an investment account. I'm watching how long it's going to take me to retire. And then I started, then I started a company where I was like, fuck it. I'm going to teach people how to invest. Because people saw, people saw me turn 4000 into 14000 So they're like, bro, I just want to learn what you're doing. I'll pay you. So that was my first big break of people just seeing proof. Because they, they watched me progressively do it. And it was like, fuck it, I'll pay you to do it. So I don't know even how, oh, this is what I did. I built up a community of stocks. And it was a bot that, that follows people. So I would... It would be a stock market page. And I used to pay this bot like $100 a month to do this. It would follow all the people who commented on the, on the stocks, right? And then I would essentially steal their <coughs> followers because it would follow a 1,000 of the people who commented on their page and then unfollow them in the same day. So I'm getting people who are interested in stocks to follow me, and my bot would just follow and unfollow them. So once I built up, like, it got me to about 7K followers fast. So I'm like, hell yeah. I got my first organic stock market audience. Then that bot got closed down, shut down by Instagram, right? So my first organic audience was seven seven rats, seven people. Then I built off that. And And it was like, I guess, I won't say it's cheating, but, you know, that was my move. You know what I mean? And, I, and then I showed them my progress, and they end up buying everything I ever had, books. Uh, fucking, um, they bought my book that I, that I wrote. They bought my chat. So I said, fuck it, I'll mentor you for $100 a month. And the next thing you know, 
every everybody wanted it. It spread like wildfire. It's a man teaching, and all you got to do is pay to get in his exclusive club. This, this is back in 2018. I'm in the Army while I'm doing this, running a real business from my phone. And then next thing you know, in three months of running that business, I was making about 20K a month. Just all that. I'm in the Army. By the time the Army, by the time I got the Army, my monthly income was about 400 racks a month. God damn. And that was March 20, 2020. You know, so it was like, I've been making that type of money since 2020. How old are you in now? 26. God damn. So, yeah, like, I know how to sell online, learning how to sell. But my first sale online was actually eBay. I was selling shoes since I was 17. So it's like I have parables to everything. You I was selling shoes. Too. You, said you that get what I'm saying? Yeah. I was selling shoes online in high school. While everybody else wearing their Jordans, I'm going to the store to go sell it. That's called discipline. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I stopped wanting to be fresh for them and said, fuck it. I'm going to use these shoes because I'm living in Kansas. Remember I told mm-hmm. you that? So, so. Nobody sitting in line for the Jordans because the white people. You get what I'm saying? So you can just go in there and get what? two, three, four pounds. What? I'm going they don't go down how many pounds you get down what? that motherfucker. They so, want you to buy all these bitches. So I'm always that type of person. I'm like, there's real life retro Jordans sitting on the shelf. I'm a nigga from the A. So I know when the Concourse come out, there's no possible way you're getting them. In, nowhere in the line. You get what I'm saying? I know this. I'm from the A. You know, I told you I moved there at 17. So I already come in there with that Atlanta game, mm-hmm. Atlanta street smart, everybody fucking with me. And they like, I don't know what it is, but you know, we from the A, so it's like everywhere we go, yeah, we people gonna, gonna fuck with our game. Yeah, everywhere, like everywhere. so. Buddy, man, going crazy. Like everybody fucking with me. Like I always been that type though. Even when I was in the army, I would sell out with haircuts. When I was when I was on eBay, sell out all the shoes. I sold every pair of shoes I ever put on there. Mm. I always learn how to either make money online or just amongst people. I sold candy too in middle school. You had to sell candy, right? Here. I sold yeah, candy. I sold candy. You get money in middle school, anything elementary school. Anything, elementary, well, the thing middle was, school. I turned ten dollars in two thousands. My granddad gave me a ten dollar bill. I never forget it. I bought. Uh, we went to the Dollar General. I bought these little sour belts. They were ten cents a piece. I just bought a whole bunch of them shits. Like, maybe 50 of them with $10. However many I could buy, 100 of them, 50, whatever it was. Sold them up for 25 cents when I got to school. That motherfucker, I turned that $10 bill into, you know, I think it was like either 30 or $25. How I many I sold? I think I turned to 50. Like, I, I, I kept running that sour belt play, 10, 10 cents, 25. I'm making 15 cents mm-hmm. off every 10 cents I spend, right? So I just kept running that play. And then next thing you know, I start stepping it up. Then I start getting the starburst, and I start doing this. But the fact that I was disciplined, see, there's another parable. I did, I saved money for a long period of time when I was 11 years old. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I always did something that involved money and me staying disciplined and saving and sticking to the plan. You know what shut me down? The teacher start, start hating. What you do? What you do, dog? You remember I the teacher was, name? Who did, so let's start with the teacher name because you got to remember the teacher name. Well, I'm going to keep on 1,000, but you, bro, I don't remember none of my teacher's names. For real. I didn't, I didn't give a fuck when I was young. I'm going to keep on 1,000. Hanging on you kid about the candy. Nigga was hating, though. It was a dude, too. He what was like, because he, this is what it was. It was like, I was selling out so fast every day that, like, I think the nigga was just low-key. Hey, he probably thought I was getting more money than him. Cause he like every day he come to school, he he making a, a fifty. And he only eleven years old. Bro shut down my operation. Told my mom, gave me a little slip and everything. Said he is not allowed to sell candy no more. Hey man, nigga. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Damn, man. I ran I ran up, but I turned ten dollars into thousands. It been in you. It yeah. been it been in you. It been in you. And it's and the, and the, and the, like you say, you grew up. Shit, that's probably one of the worst parts in the love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Still to this day, <laughs> to this <Sure>. day, <laughs> to this day. <clears throat> but 
But it just showed everybody that everybody can have the same discipline. It's just about understanding what you want and what your vision. And I think that's I think that's the problem of a lot of people who where we come from, they don't have a vision. Everybody, sometimes you have to understand and learn what you want. Sometimes people just don't know what they want. You see what I'm saying? Like, I never knew what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? I just knew that, no, nah, I want to do something different. I want to do something else. Oh, I'm, I just followed my intuition. You see what I'm saying? Like you said, I just always follow my intuition. All my intuition led me to be in a, where I'm at right now. I never tried to be a rapper. Never. Never wanted to be a rapper. Never inspired to be a yeah. rapper. Never said, oh, I want to do that. That shit could just, I tell people that, like, you got to learn how to pivot in life. Like, niggas always think their calling is, has to be what they say it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, God will put something in front of you, and that whole time it was that. Facts. You get what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't follow and want to even try to see if something is right for them. That comes They stuck on it. Like, 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 let's just say you a football player. You like, bro, I'm football. It's a lot of niggas who go through this. I'm football. I'm football. And when that shit don't work out, they done spent their whole identity thinking one thing. I tell dude, you got to have a mindset of playing A, B, C, D. All this shit can work. Thanks. You get what I'm saying? Sure. Like, that's how I was. I was like, no matter what, this shit, there's a, if there's a will, there's a way. You get what I'm saying? If God said if there's a way... To do it, then it's possible. That's how I look at it. Like, if it's not possible, then it's not possible. But if it's actually possible, then it's possible for me to do it. That's how I nah, see it. No, nah, definitely, definitely. But I it, like, it's easy for you to say because it's you. For sure. You know what I'm saying? You and it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's, 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 it's just part of who you were. Like, so I say shit like that all the time. What the fuck you mean? It's just. But I started to understand. Everybody ain't the same. Everybody don't have that. It's a lot of motherfuckers who don't know who they are, don't know what they like, don't know what they want, don't got no vision, don't have enough knowledge to even understand what they want. They just see everything going around them. Oh, I like he, what he doing right there. He making some money. I'm gonna try that right there. Oh, I'm gonna try this right here. And like you say, they have callings, but they miss their callings because they say they one way. So I, I, yeah. I, I, I give you a better, I give you a better explanation. I take it real. I take it me. I got on um, dancing, all right? Oh, yeah. But if you ask anybody about me, they would not mention dancing. If you take any nigga like, I was a gangster, a for real one. But I would get in the club, I would dance and leave that motherfucker sweaty with all the little, back then wasn't them, but the bitches and the crazy nigga dance. Everybody else used to just post up, smoke people <laughs> and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I used to go on the floor and dance. I'm one of the reasons niggas start dancing. You know what I'm saying? But if you take any nigga like me then, nigga would be like, like, I ain't doing no dancing, nigga. I'm a gangster, nigga. I just, I was comfortable, <laughs> I was comfortable with who I was. Yeah. But that led me to, shit, boy, I, I made life, I made it my first million rapper. You know what I'm saying? Never tried to be a rapper, never wanted to be a rapper. You see what I'm saying? Right. But I was comfortable who I was, and it, like you say, it led me to something else. You know what I'm saying? Right. People don't even understand it. You see what I'm saying? A niggas will want to do this, but if they partner be like, man, that shit lame in here, bro. They ain't going to do, do it. it. They're not going to do it. That's what I tried to say. Like, me, it, it, it's hard to be a nigga like us who can sit around actual niggas and, and nigga tell them they ain't going to do it and still going to do it despite people doubting them. Some people are like, man, fuck, they said I can't do it, so I, I guess I ain't. That shit weren't for me. These niggas right. If you got that attitude that the other man is always right, then you gonna fail in life. For you sure, gotta for always sure. bet on you. A lot of niggas don't bet on them because they taught to obey authority. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I never respect the authority since day one. A nigga, a nigga <laughs> like us, a nigga like us, we don't for one, nah, we don't nah. respect authority. Nah, you gotta show me out on it. Yeah, it like, makes sense to me. When you a nigga like that, you, you gonna succeed. Facts. You said what? I take this uh, ass whooping. Facts. I, I take this of, ass whooping. You yeah, feel I me? A lot of but I'm gonna do me. Niggas like that gonna succeed. You feel me? I'm going to take this ass whooping. That, that just, that's just how I will. I got plenty of ass whooping. I did, too. You feel me? Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> he ass said I did, whooping. too. I did shit. I knew I was going to get an ass whooping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I done did shit. My mama said, you better not do that shit. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No one in my head. You might whoop my ass now. You know what I'm saying? Right now. You know what I'm saying? I just, my mama say, people do shit. My mama say, you better not do nothing to that boy tomorrow, bro. 
Okay, ma. <laughs> Damn. When I said that fast, she already know. I was, I, my mind made up already. Damn. Hey, fuck me up. You gonna be on punishment three months? You know how I many time out? You know how I many time as a kid I was on punishment three months, six months. <laughs> See back then, <laughs> these kids don't get it like that. When I was a kid, yeah. I don't have to be on punishment six months. Damn. I'm for real sick, man. I'm for real. Nah. Am I lying, Cole? Cole, am I lying? Look, he laughing. Six months, man. That nigga boy, did it. Three that months, nigga, no bullshit, boy. Three nigga months. Nigga did a bid as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. In the project. In the project, bro. Hey, All that you can do is them niggas that come to the window. That you had to talk to you out the window. No. I swear. Then, then, you, then, then you don't punish me. Then you get the mama say, got there. After about the money, that shit, then you go on the porch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody got to graduate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody got to come to the porch. That happened. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Not with me. And then, but... then you on that porch, you fuck around, sneak out and get caught. Yeah, back. Hold another mic. But you know but you know what's crazy? I act I had real crazy when I live with my mom. When I, when I live with my dad, I got a little bit more civilized. I did too. You get know what I'm saying? Like, when I, I moved too. to the hood, that's actually when I calmed down. I, well, you know what? I, it's kind of... See, my mom... Staying in the project, I did the fuck I want. I'm the oldest. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I got I got um six, I got six sisters, five brothers. Mm -hmm. And I'm the oldest. You know what I'm saying? Right. And when I moved with my dad, it was like white people. You know what I'm saying? Probably like 15, 20 percent black people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it just just taught me. I started learning the, like the other side. I learned the other side. I learned the love inside, learn, really teach you, really care for you. Really gonna go out of the way, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, to make sure you was cool and do shit like that. So I kind of so you so you knew your father. Hell yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but see, you, my father always been in my life. But then I end up when I went to go stay with him, probably like like. So, so let me yeah, ask you this then: Do you feel like niggas who grow up with fathers turn out better? Facts. Cause we, I grew up, you know, so I knew facts. my father. The biggest facts, and I don't, and I don't even care what rim your father in either. Doesn't matter. You're gonna be the best at what you do. Facts. I think you so learn too. better from me. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel I, like we we respect our father's authority. That's what it you, is. You, always. Like like our mother is only so like like she's gonna teach you how to love. But the thing is, she ain't gonna be able. You're not gonna respect her authority when you become a teenager. Mm -hmm. So now you don't got any accountability for what you do. Facts. The dudes who who you know fathers not in their lives. And not all of them, because some moms, you know how know how to get get some straight. But Facts. most of the time, it's really not possible. No matter how how she thinks, so especially got a big, strong black boy. You get what I mean? Like it ain't can't tame him. Nah. So it's like kid. These boys do need their fathers. I'm gonna ask you this: What do you think? Okay, this is personal. I'm coming from me. Yeah. Speak for everybody. What should be the first step into getting to stop? Shit. Um, learning fundamental analysis, learning how to see if a pro if a company is profitable. So that's pretty easy. I give classes, free classes on that on Sundays, on how to see. And anybody can join. They can join the Zoom, and I'm gonna teach you how to get started in the stock market and learn the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like how to get started, because I know how to teach somebody from A to Z, from beginner to pro. Cause I was them, you know what I'm saying. So I feel like that's what made my my brand blow up. It's just being able to show people that. But yeah, learning that is the first step. The second step is uh, learning technical analysis. It depends on if they want if they want to be a trader, they got to do what is called technical analysis, which is looking at the charts. You get what I'm saying. But if they want to be like a person who's saving up for retirement and just want to buy stocks. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all this shit is. All this shit is is if you're trying to buy stocks, all you're trying to do is catch a great company at a cheap price, which is buying a dip. You know what I'm saying? That's like if it was the you weed explain market. explain it a lot. Huh? You explain it a lot. Yeah. Your videos. I be watching yeah, your videos. Yeah, yeah, you explain exactly. it a lot on your videos. Exactly. Like all you want to do is find a great company like an Amazon, a Google, a Tesla, uh, uh, whatever, at the cheapest price you can find. You get what I'm saying? That's really all this shit is about. If I had to explain it in the most simplest terms, lamest terms, it would be that. So for all the black people who are like, I want to get into the stock market and all of that, just realize that's what you're trying to do. And you're buying assets. So assets are anything that you can buy 
that turns into money. So a watch could be an asset, a Rolex could be an asset because it's going up in value. So you could buy that and technically you didn't spend 16K on the watch. You have a $16,000 asset that's going to appreciate in value. So stocks are the same thing. All of these things are the same. This is like if you buy a Hellcat, but you want to rent it out on Toro, that's an asset now. You could turn things into assets. You know what I'm saying? As long as you know how to make money off of it by either marketing, but stock, the stock market is the only thing that I know of that doesn't require other people to make money or marketing or, ki or ass kissing, anything. That's why I love it, because it gives me a sense of fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I made 5000 today. If I know I can make five to ten thousand dollars a day, I can't. There's no possible thing a man can tell me to do. Gotcha. If I know how to do that without talking to you, and then you can shut down my account and I can go trade from somebody else's account with their social and just break them off, you can never stop me. There's nothing a man can do to stop you if you learn the stock market. You can't. just draws a game on y'all lad, yeah. and that bitch went on y'all head, boy. Yeah, nigga, that shit was slick a bit right nigga, there, Bob. Nigga can't stop me. You feel me? Like, like there's nothing a nigga can really tell me at this point. Once I figure this out, and now I'm like, okay, I want everybody to say fuck you. That's the harder part about your ass too. That's what yeah. I like the best. That's what I like the most right there. Cause, Cause, it's like, Cause it's like, it's like, how does it hurt me to let other people say fuck you too, and, and, and get get out of here? They gonna pay me to to show them how. And then, and I freed so many people. So many people quit their jobs. So many people. I turned people into millionaires off this shit. I don't, man, I done, I done gave the world so much money. I know I've generated the world probably, to be honest, about a hundred million to two hundred million, just off my Instagram. Be popping on that. Bitch. And one thing I learned is, you make ten percent of what you put out. So if I generate the world 100 million, just know I got my 10%. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I learned that you, 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 the impact you make on the world, you just get a little bit of that. So the bigger your impact, the, the bigger your profit. Percentage. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, that's all I want. That's what all I want to tell people. You got to make an impact. And, you know, like I said, the stock market is not hard. I do recommend doing it because it's like, think about it. Let's just say we got a bunch of cash in our house, right? That shit is sitting still. It's not appreciating in value. It's not in any assets. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's how I thought of it. I was a barber, so I had cash, but it was just sitting still. And I was like, I'll never get rich this way. You can't get rich saving. You cannot save your way to getting rich. You can only invest your way to getting rich. Talk to him. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So there's no such thing as I'm going to just save 10000 No. Your money has to literally work for you while you're away and investing into stocks was the only thing I saw that could do that. And I said, all I got to do is learn this. I'm willing to lose a million dollars to make 10 million one day. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's my mindset. So I took losses in the beginning. Learn from those losses. Learn everything there is. And then I came up with the system, my own system, of teaching the world. And now the biggest people in the world are on my shit. I'm, I'm such a big influence in the stock market. Everybody who does stocks, Wall Street niggas know who I am. The whites, the Jews, all of them, they know who I am. Because they know that I've cracked the code. I've taught the world a system that's teaching them how to make money. And I've simplified making money. And now the world is paying attention to me, what I'm doing. You get what I'm saying? But And you talking about you ain't goddamn figure out nothing to change the world. No, Shit no, no, me. I changed the world with No, this. no, I'm just I ain't gonna I understand, lie. I understand what you're saying when you say that, but I'm, I'm telling done. you, I'm, yeah, but you, you, you you undid it already though. I'm not done. You though. ain't finished. See, see, I got more coming. I can't really speak on it because it's like I'm so influential now to the point where niggas watch me to figure out what they next move gonna be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like, I've generated over 20 million doing this shit in four years off independence by myself. You get what I'm saying? And I don't even like to say those numbers, but I have to say those numbers to motivate these young niggas and say, nigga, I'm 26 years old. Figured out how to generate gross over 20 M's doing this shit. Did I keep all of it? Of course not. 
had a lot of fun. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Kept half of that shit. Generated 20 and kept half. Ta- taxes, fun, private jets, Ferraris, G-Wagons, two mansions. You get what I'm saying? And, 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 and food every day. I eat a five-star meal every day. Talk to them. You get what I mean? I really do live life like this. Um, and you can too. That was a commercial one. <laughs> but, see, but see, I don't even, some, a lot of times I don't really like to say all that because it's like. No, nah, we're in the apartment. We're in the apartment. That's a lot to say to a nigga. You get what nah, I'm saying? No, it ain't. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, you know, it's not. Like, we, we on our time. We ain't on their time. Yeah. It ain't a lot to say. It ain't, it ain't a lot to say. It's not a lot to say. Yo, I'm going to tell you why I ain't a lot to say. Because what? It's reachable. It is. And you done shown it. It's fucking reachable, dog. You know see. what I'm saying? Niggas, bro, niggas, we the superheroes, how. bro. Nigga needs, nigga, this the motivation niggas need. This motivation, bro. You see what I'm saying? Nigga, we the superheroes. Let me, let, me you, let me tell you how this shit go, bro. This shit so crazy. Parlay. Yeah, let me get one of them phones. Uh, the one with a big case on it. This shit so crazy, man. To the point where it's like... <clears throat> Niggas would think I ain't even this far just because of how, how old I am. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's dudes who in my industry, they they said, nigga, I see you making 10 million one day. I can show you an account right now with 10 in it. And he's telling me, hey, I see your brand making 10 million. Keep going one day. Don't even understand I got more money than him. You get what I'm saying? Like, like when you this young and you doing this shit, I got to stay humble because it's like, I like being that underdog. You used, I used to be the one who was like, damn, I want the spotlight. I want the spotlight on. Now it's like once you acquire real wealth, you're like, oh, no, this is real. This ain't no 500, this and that. This is over 500K a month real. You get what I'm saying? This is real paper. So it's like I'm trying to figure out how I can leverage this paper and turn this paper into 100 M's. You get what I'm saying? That's all I think about every single day. I don't watch TV. I don't, I don't do shit. The only thing I watch is sports. Football is my only escape. And an occasional some basketball. Who your favorite team? Atlanta Falcons, Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia Bulldogs. Who your second favorite team in NFL? None. ATL, uh, ATL. Georgia. This nigga real shit. Atlanta, boy. I tell you, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of niggas is different. No, 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 nigga. Do a lot of niggas is different, dog. I don't, I don't even rock another nigga jersey. Like, I wouldn't even rock another nigga hat. I don't wear no white socks hat, no Charlotte hunter. I don't care about your colors. Fuck your fuck your city. Yeah. You feel I'm me? the same way, but I I I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm the exact same way, but I will rock a bulls. I just can't. I will. I I'll rock a joint. I'm gonna have to rock I, a I rock a bull for a joint. It's I'm just rock I the just Dominique. I'm just I'm fuck a, I just niggas. We, I stand on my own, too. That's yeah. how I feel. Nah, you know nah, I'm fucking with you. I'm, I'm fucking with you. Dominique, you feel me? Yeah, nah, I'm fucking If with I would have had a Sharpie, I, I could have had Dominique sign my shit. He was right there, but he ain't had no Sharpie. I had on his jersey right in front of him. Mm. Well, I was at a Hawks game. I always pay for the floor seats. So it was like, but the thing is, dog, I done did it all. You could think of the private jets, the floor seats, the expensive cars. Like, I had to get that out of my system. So that's so I fucked up M's to get that out of my system. I knew it was gonna be a phase. But I had to make sure I made enough money so I could do some dumb shit like that. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I fucked up five million on fun. Private jets, vacations, cars, this and that. And now I'm at a stage where I'm like, I'm going to not do this again. I'm gonna kick back. I'm gonna be humble about this shit. And let's go, and let's go. Be grateful for the money we still got. You know what I'm saying? For not, for, you know what I'm saying? And let's go turn this shit into M's. All of it. All money counts. Every dollar counts. See, some niggas think because I make this, that 10000 don't count. It counts. Because that's going, that's, that's 10000 you taking away from my mission. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that's another thing. No matter how much money you make, every dollar counts. You get what I'm saying? And and any nigga who knows me, he can attest. I'm they think I'm I am giving, but I'm also like watchful of my money. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I learned that from white men. I respected the fuck out of that. See, I was thinking like once you get a lot of money, you just cause cause that's what black people teach us. That once you get it, 
everybody just got to get your shit. You know what I'm saying? Go go get your mama a house. Go do this. Go get your go go get your cousin who want to go to college. Go pay for this. Go do that. Go do that. White people don't do that. You get what I'm saying? Everything we think people aren't actually doing. We got it all backwards. And, and you know what's crazy? I learned this too. If you think opposite of what the general population is doing, you'll become successful. If you literally like point. just literally do whatever they're not doing. If you just outwork the actual general common man, like think about it. What does the common man do? Nine to five, five. eight hours. There's eight oh. hours in a day. Nine, nine to five, as soon as they get off, they on Instagram, on the couch, surfing the internet, or watching Netflix until they go to bed. Or they about to do that until they go to the club. You get what I'm saying? And then rinse and repeat. Nine to five, eight hours, gone, uh, get off, surf the internet, Netflix, club, everything Trade itself, that. learning how to get some money after those eight hours. <clears throat> so it's like, I learned this. You know what I did? The military took 12 hours of my day. We worked from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. I still got off work and cut hair after those 12 hours of working. See, I didn't, I didn't look at the fact that because you said I was off, I was off. You know what I'm saying? I still cut from 5, uh, what was it? From 6 to 10, I cut. You know what I'm saying? $15 a head, I cut. I'm making $30 an hour. I was making about $120 every day as an 18 year, 18 year old, right? I stopped cutting hair around 10 or 11 o'clock. So from 6 to 11. So I only had one hour off. That's the only free time I had. See, other people think that's like, man, I need six hours to enjoy myself. I was comfortable having one hour to myself a day because I knew that was all I would get. You know what I'm saying? But I knew I had to cut hair. I must make 3K a month doing this. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to apply that to, I was investing my haircut money into the stock market. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I look at shit differently. But then you know what also made me not feel sorry for people is the fact that the military took 12 hours from me and I still work five hours after they took my 12. People work a, a nine to five, eight hours a day and complain about how they don't have time. And I was the nigga who really didn't have time. I had one hour a day to myself. You get what I'm saying? And I enjoyed that one hour. And they complained because somebody took a third of their day. And all I had was one hour left. You get what I mean? So it's like people make excuses that really don't exist. They took a third of your day. It's 24 hours in a day. Eight times three is 24. They took one third of your day. Imagine a nigga taking half. Now what? You get what I'm saying? So I, I didn't make excuses when they took half and you complain about a third. So it's like that's how that's how I kind of look at shit too. Like y'all just don't understand. You got all the time in the world. You, you got to apply yourself. What? But you got to work overtime. See, I tell people the easiest way to get rich is to have a nine to five, and then have another goddamn nine to five or another what you call it. But live off your first stream of income and invest your your other stream because that's how I did it. I live off my army money and invest in my barber money. So my side hustle powered my dreams. That's how. That's the easiest way to do it. It works for anybody. If anybody want to get lit up right now, job, live off that, another job, invest that into some other shit. A business, assets, stocks, whether you trading watches, go find something. Go, go research side hustle to do. You're going to find everybody just sharing information. And now you just lit up. You just got to choose something, a lane. But it's just literally that simple. You're going to have to work overtime at first to buy your freedom back. So that's what I did. I said, I'm going to work as much as I can so I can be free one day. So I knew. So I literally traded one hour of my time, and now I only work for three hours a day and make close to a meal a month, every month. Off and I've been doing that. Yes. Shit, now. So you get what I'm saying? I trade for two hours, and I make content for one hour, and I'm through. So I used to work for fucking 18 hours just so I can work three. But niggas don't realize you got to do that. You have to do that one day. Really, I work. I only had five hours of sleep a day. So I worked 19 hours a day. Well, 18. Yep, 18. I worked 18 hours a day. 
since I for since I was 18 years old. But believe it or not, I still do it. I don't. I'm actively working for three hours, but when I'm not at work, I'm uh, strategizing. I'm writing down notes. I'm taking notes. I'm learning. So me studying is a part of my job now. I get paid to go learn. You know what I'm saying? And go give give back the information. So I go seek the information like a hound. I go sniff the information. And I go tell it to y'all. I'm like the Harriet Tubman. You get what I mean? Like real shit. Like I go steal. I, I'm Nat Turner or a Robin Hood. I go yeah. steal from them and sell it back to you. I go. I go seek the information. I pay. I pay. I spend a lot of money on this. Yeah, I heard. Well, I heard what your ass spend. I was saying, what the goddamn? I spend five thousand on. I spent. I just spent five thousand on a, on a, a conference ticket just to go hear people talk, just so I can be in that room. And, and and see what are these people who making a hundred million saying? You get know what I'm saying? But they charging five thousand to go hear them say it. I happily paid it and I will happily keep paying that. That's the only way. I heard somebody say today, you shouldn't listen to people who are in a higher t- tax bracket than you if they're speaking a language you don't know. It's the most bullshit I ever heard in my life. They just scared whoever said that. No, 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 no. It was just people are ignorant. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only, that's what got me lit. It's only listening to the niggas who got more money than me. I never listen to anybody. I'm talking about if you. Because the only nigga who got money ain't going to do nothing but talk money. Thank you. What the fuck? It's just see, shit. See. So the more money a nigga got, the more money a nigga going to be talking. See, if I, the numbers I saying right now, the niggas will laugh at me. The niggas who I know. That 20 million, I know niggas will laugh at that. Be like, <laughs> that was cute. But, you know what I'm saying, this is what you need to be learning. See, I like that. Those type of niggas I like to be in the room with, the niggas who going to laugh at me mm-hmm. when I say these numbers. And I know, and I've been in those rooms with the 50 million, 100 million, 800 million, and it, that's what inspires me, that no matter what level I get on, it's always a bigger fish. Nah, that shit too hard. For sure. Tell them where they can follow you, dog. Aristotle Investments, A R I S T. O T L E underscore investments. Uh, follow me. Uh, make sure you sign up for my classes on uh, Sundays. Comment, learn under any of my posts, and it'll send you a DM. All right, I'm going to have somebody send you a DM or the link, and you can learn for free the stock market. You know what I'm saying? At first, I used to charge for this. Now I open it up to the world for free. So, y'all yeah. need to better take advantage of it. Tell yeah. y'all now. I ain't never told y'all no bullshit. But you go do it. I'm on it. I ain't lying. I'm telling y'all I want it. I promise. Uh, y'all finna see. Well, y'all ain't gonna see, but y'all gonna get this shit, man. I wanna say appreciate you for stopping by, dog. You know what I'm saying? Dropping this game. You know what I'm saying? Um, this shit uh, very inspirational. And I definitely think that we gonna flip some niggas with this interview. I really know this. For sure. So, I, I really, I really know see, this. see, it's the honest truth, bro. I got some shit coming out where, and I say it here, because it's on apartments. I got some shit coming out where uh, I'm going to make this conglomerate of uh, educational shit. So I got my boy. I ain't going to say who, but he a famous producer. I got him making the beat. So we're going to do a beat making course. We're going to do a, a real estate course. But I'm but I'm, I'm doing it. So I, I thought about for an 18-year-old black man who doesn't want to go to the military, who doesn't want to go to college, he doesn't have shit. He doesn't have something. For him to say, hey, here's this stream of income. Here's how to do it from the expert himself and put it all into one. So I got the dude who making my app. I'm having him make an app making course. He's a black man. I said, hey, can you make me an app making course? So cause my cause my young black men need that. You know what I'm saying? For the uh for the for my camera guy. I said, hey, I need a camera camera course. My young black men need that. I need a course for all things that make money. Even I got to do teach you how to do a podcast course. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a network of all this shit so that now that, now that okay, because I, because I, you know, options is some shit I like to do, but it's, it's some young nigga out there who like, well, what if I don't want to do the stocks? He might be interested in, in learning how to do beats. And then and the dude I got doing the beats, fuck it, I tell you, me and ATL Jake are going to do it. You know who he is, right? Yeah, yeah, he said I dropped yeah. the... Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
fault. I like what that is. Oh, them motherfuckers, the, the horns and shit, yeah, them yeah. bombs so, so, and shit so, dropping. So, so me and ATL Jacob, I told him, hey, bro, it's a lot of young niggas in Atlanta who want to be you. And they'll be inspired if you teach them how to do the beats you do. And I sell that for you. I said, I showed them my numbers. I said, nigga, I made 20 M's doing this shit. Let me show you something, bro. I got you. I sell it for you. I told everybody. I said, hey, I sell this shit for y'all. Let's 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 get this shit together and let's build something for the for the world. So this is exclusive on parlay right here. It's some shit I got going on. It's gonna really change the world. So you think this is <laughs> Wait till I show you how to make apps, how to flip houses, how to do stocks too, how to do uh, fucking anything, rental car business. I'm, I'm getting all the top players in the game. We're going to teach them how to do it. Uh, videography, we're going to teach them how to do it. Photography, um, marketing. marketing. We got a marketing session in there. We got a uh, trucking. We got a trucking set it, session in there. We got all that shit in there, right? And I want to make it to where if when a young black man come out of high school, he do this, and he don't need, because you really don't need college or the military. Once I show you the systems of what I of how to make money, I can free damn near, I, mean, I can free the race with this shit. You feel me? So that's how I see it. But I'm going to get rich doing it too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like I said, whatever you put out to the world, so I'm going to generate over a billion off that shit when I put it out. You're going to get your 10. No, no. But I'm, I'm going to get 10% <laughs> of that shit. You get know what I'm saying? These people going to make a B off this shit. Because white people, Indian people, everybody follow me. And they're going to take what I do. They're going to make And that's going to generate the world billions. But I'm going to get my 100. I'm going to get my 10%. Like I always tell people, you get 10% of what you put out. And that's it. Nah, nigga, we eating the light motherfucker that yeah, yeah. sign up for the course. Send me why I sign up for. I'm finna send you some money now. Course, send me, I'm finna get the <laughs> deposit now on the shit. I'm for real. Yeah. I'm gonna give him a deposit right now for this shit. Shit, hell yeah. Shit. Man, it's time to get the whole goddamn. I'm thinking like a motherfucker now. <laughs> but, I done forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Goddamn. Shit. Yeah. Roll another blood up. Goddamn. Yeah. I ain't going to sleep tonight. <laughs> but I was not sleep to y'all bullshit. I'm dead ass for real. I ain't sleeping tonight, boy. I ain't sleep. No, I probably gotta, sleep about four, five hours. We got to make sure when a nigga come out of high school, he got something to do. Because that's that's who I do this shit for. Y'all yeah, nigga hearing this shit? See this shit? This why I do. See, I do this shit for niggas like y'all. I gotta make you know what I'm saying? This shit for niggas like y'all. Y'all better listen. Tell y'all, man. For real, for real. Nah, for real, for real. Hey, man. Appreciate you for tapping in. Man, it's your boy Pale, man. Live from Digital Studio. We in the apartment with Pale. Meet me in the apartment.